We have a production line that produces 14 ounce ketchup bottles and in order to monitor for accuracy, bottles are checked to make sure they actually contain the right amount of ketchup. And if it is found that the mean amount would be other than 14, they want to make adjustments. So they can't look at every bottle, but they take a sample of 10 bottles and we have the different weights of the ketchup bottles or ounces. And the histogram for that data is given at the bottom. We want to use the appropriate test at the 5% level to find out if the production line would need adjustment. So what we really want to look at is what would be the population mean amount of ketchup in the bottles and we'll base our information of the population mean from the sample that we have of size 10. So we want to test if our population mean is equal to 14 because our null hypothesis is always equal to, so mu equal to 14. And our alternative here is just that we would have a difference because we want to know if we would have something other than the target of 14 ounces. To get our test statistic, we need to have our sample mean and sample standard deviation from our data. If you add up all the data points, the 10 values given, what you'll find is that they add up to 140.31. So our X bar is 140.31 divided by sample size of 10. So we get 14.031. Standard deviation, S, if you took the x squareds and added them up to get help get that value, you'll find that's 1968.809. And so S is going to be the square root of that value minus our 140.31 squared divided by our 10, all divided by our 9. And what you should find for this is 0.115. So to get our test statistic for doing this test, it's a T, and it will be our mean of 14.031. We subtract the value we're testing for, which is 14, divide by S over square root of N, and our N here, as we said, was 10. So what you'll get is 0.852 for this. Now we want to go and find our p-value in our table. And what our p-value looks like in picture form is we want the area in both tails because we're doing a not equal to. So we have negative 0.852 and positive 0.852. And we want this area beyond the two tails. So we go look for 0.852 in row 9 because our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which will give us here 9. So 0.852 in row 9 of our table, we see it's bounded between 0.25 and 0.2 from this 0 0.703 and 0 0.883. So we have tail areas of 0 0.25 and 0 0.2. And when we get our p-value, we need to pay attention to the type of test we're doing. So we have 0.25 and 0.2, but we want to take the area in both tails because we're doing a two-tailed test. So we're going to multiply these by 2, and what we'll find is that our p-value is between 0.5 4 should be less than 0.5 and greater than 0.4. Now if we compare that to a 5% level, our p-value is somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5, so it's definitely greater than our 0.05. And when we have a large p-value greater than our 0.05 level, we're going to not reject the null. So here we would fail to reject. And when we fail to reject the null, that means we don't have evidence of the alternative. So we are not able to say that mu is not equal to 14, which means here that we would not need to adjust the line. We don't have evidence to have any mean different than 14 for this situation, so the production line does not need adjustment. And we're also asked here, are the conditions required for this test to be valid satisfied? Now we do have a small sample of only size 10, but if we look at our data, as plotted here in this histogram, it appears to be fairly normal. And so we would say that, yes, our data appears to be fairly normal, so that even though our sample size is small, we should be okay in using this test and coming up with the conclusion to not reject the null, that we don't have evidence that the mean is different from 14 for the amount of ketchup, and so that the line does not need adjustment.